Greetings YouTube, I'm not sure if you guys are following the news, uh, this is going to be an update on the recent video I did about the six uh, retailers, um, sports card uh, people who were, or retailers who were more than six people actually, but the six of them who got arrested for dealing in the fake jerseys. This is going to be an update, I'm not sure if you guys are following it on uh, Sports Collectors Daily and people keep asking me about this even you know I keep telling them go check the site but I guess I have to make a video about it so I'm going to show you quickly show you some of the latest an FBI agent large uh, reveals that a large number of the jerseys or, and, and, or jersey pieces were in evidence the FBI says none of the six memorabilia dealers charged with fraud on Tuesday are facing conspiracy charges, but the accumulated total of jerseys and pieces of jerseys taken into evidence during this investigation in those cases runs into the thousands, not hundreds of them, thousands of them people, just from six different companies, or more than six companies, but... Um, the Bureau announced Tuesday that Eric Ingelson of New Jersey from Taylor Huff Inc. and Pasadena Training Corp. and uh, Bradley Wells of Florida, Authentic Sports and Authentic or Historic Auctions Inc. have been indicted on mail fraud charges and Bernard Grenet of New Jersey, shout out Jersey, of Pro Sports Investments. Bradley Horn of Southern or South Carolina, Authentic Sports, My, Mitchell Schumacher of Wisconsin from MS Sports, and Jared Oldridge of Nevada of JO Sports have been charged by information with mail fraud. Investigators say each defendant represented jerseys as game used when they were not. Um, I'll leave the link if you want to keep reading um, this uh, article. It's a different article, as you can see, than the one I showed you before. And also some more related news that there were three guilty pleas in the fraud cases. And um, now the, another reason why I'm reading these names over again is because I want you to check if you are a game used collector please check if you have a COA or an LOA from one of these places because guess what right now it's pretty much worthless and if it's not worthless yet it will be soon for example when I was recently in Vegas I checked out one of the store out there uh, you know business J.O. Sports and uh, I think they go by J.O. Authentics as well and uh, Jared Oldridge, 37, a resident of Las Vegas, involved in the business operation of J.O. Sports, and a business that currently has a contract with several NFL teams for selling game-worn jerseys. Yep, they got, uh, they're officials, officially licensed by the teams to sell their game-worn jerseys. Now, this place actually has a license for the Jets. That's why I'm so interested with them. Uh, Jets are one of my PC teams. Um, and like I keep telling you, when they have a never-ending supply of the top players that should be waving all kinds of red flags, uh, warning sounds, uh, red lights should be flashing in your mind's eye. I mean, a never-ending supply of the top players is virtually impossible, even if they have the contract with the Jets. I've examined some of their stuff. I didn't buy it because some of the stitching of the letters didn't look right and so forth. And some of their autograph stuff, some of the autograph stuff, it might be authentically game-worn, but the, nowhere did it say it was autographed by the player. And that was another red flag for me, so I didn't buy the, the stuff that I was looking at. So, and now... He pleaded guilty, so there's no question now that he was scamming people. Now, according to the plea agreements in each case involving the sale, consignment, or auction of jerseys in which in defendant falsely and fraudulently represented the buyers that the jerseys were game used when they were not. According to the plea agreements, the three men involved in the purchase of hundreds of jerseys to sell, they intended to sell as game worn. 
The fraud charge is also involved the defendant selling what was represented to gain more jerseys to other persons, knowing that the jerseys were intended to be sold to sports trading card companies and also to you know auction houses. As stated in the charges to increase the value and price of the packages of sports training cards, manufacturers frequently purchase game used jerseys, cut the jerseys into small pieces, and insert the pieces into the card packages. Most of you guys know this stuff, so you could read it all yourself if you're uh, interested. Now, what I like here on the bottom. For the three indictments, an Aldridge from J.O. Sports, you can read the actual plea agreement that he made. So you can see exactly what he admitted to doing. Read it for yourself. I'll put the links below, why not? Uh, sh you know, shout out goes to Sports Collectors Daily. You should visit that site maybe daily that's why it's called sports collectors daily check it out they're always posting this stuff out there for you to check out look this is you know 15 page plea agreement it's a pretty interesting read and this is just for Oldridge from J.O. Sports in uh, Vegas Nevada and there's the other three and then like I said Go to Business Industry News. The fourth dealer pleaded guilty. And if you want, you could see his plea agreement. Now, the funny thing is about this uh, scammer, as I mentioned before, he was arrested once before in the Operation Foul Ball when the FBI arrested did those arrests in the year 2000. So he's, you know, a repeat offender. So his plea, even though he does have a plea agreement, he's going to still face a stiffer, uh, you know, penalty <clears throat> because of his uh, previous arrest for the same exact thing. Okay, let me allow me to add uh, one more item here. If I don't get interrupted again, uh, yeah, you don't do it. Um, the uh, Schumacher uh, plea agreements, they actually included the one from the year 2000, Operation Foul Ball plea agreement. So you could see those for yourself. You can download them as PDFs if you'd like and print them if you want. Thanks again to you know sportscollectorsdaily.com for providing those documents for your reading pleasure. And, don't for, and the interesting thing about those uh, plea agreements of all of these scammers here is uh, criminals, scumbags, and this obvious repeat offender that the part of the plea agreement is they have to rat out the other people involved. So more arrests are pending. Stay tuned for more exciting uh, developments. Dream big, because sometimes small dreams aren't worth having. And uh, like I keep telling you, Report these scammers. Tell other collectors. I don't have, you know, there's only a few hundred people going to watch this video at the most. And make your own videos. Tell other collectors. You can make the exact same video I just did if you'd like. You know, because you've got different subscribers than I do. And talk about it on the forums. Talk about it on the blogs. Get the word out there. It's time to take these people down. Your complaints do matter. They do work. Several of these arrests were made possible by one complaint and one complaint only. What is your excuse for not complaining? Do something. Check your COAs. Check your LOAs. Did you buy anything from these criminal scumbags? Contact somebody. Ask them. You, you're, you're questioning the value of what you purchased. You want to know if it's real or not now. That's the point of me making these videos. Ask questions. And again, dream big because sometimes the small dreams are not worth having.